What is going on everybody? My name is Alex Freebring and in today's video we're going to be going over negotiating your salary. And congratulations! If you got to this point in the interview process, that means you followed all of my advice in the previous videos and got a job offer, which is huge. So congratulations. What we're going to do in this video is walk through some of my general tips on negotiating your salary, and I'll walk through some examples, and I'll talk about the things that I have done in the past that have been successful for me in ways that I've been able to negotiate my salary to a higher rate. So let's look at the general tips for negotiating your salary. Number one is know your worth and do your research. Before you even enter the interview process, you should have done research on your industry, on your location, on how much the average salary is, how many years experience do you have, what skills are you bringing in that increase your value. So all of these things, you need to be doing research. I mean, we are data analysts for God's sake. You need to know everything that can increase the value of your position at this company. Again, do your research. You wanna know what your market value is. That is very important during this process. Number two is look at the total package, not just the salary. A company can have a lot of different perks or a company can have none of these perks and you want to know these things before you actually sign on. A high salary at one place with absolutely no perks may be a worse option than a lower salary somewhere else that has a lot of really good perks. And so knowing that information before you accept a job offer is really important. Number three is a little bit of prep work that you actually need to do before you enter the interview process or get to the salary negotiation process but you wanna set a lowest acceptable salary and your salary goals. Because you wanna have a number in your mind that you aren't willing to go below. So if your number is $50,000 and they're offering you 45 and they will not budge up to 50, then that means that's a no-go. And you wanna set the line somewhere. And you also wanna have salary goals because during the negotiation process, you definitely want to have a certain number you're trying to achieve. And so if they're offering you 65,000 and your goal is 70, maybe you ask for 75 and then you guys can meet in the middle at 70. And that leads us right into number four, which is compromise. For the most part, you're not gonna get exactly what you were looking for in terms of salary or benefits, but if you can get close enough and it's something that's within your range of what's acceptable, you don't wanna keep going back and forth and hounding them for more money. At some point, you have to accept that that's what you're gonna get and compromise and take the deal. I know for myself, when I was first starting out as a data analyst, I had zero expectations. So I really didn't have to compromise at all. Whatever they offered me, I was really happy. But as I got further along in my career, I started setting expectations for my salary and setting goals for my salary. And that's when I did have to compromise later in different stages and different interviews. And number five is stay positive and be grateful because you just got offered a job that probably other people were applying for and you were the best candidate and they want you there. And so stay positive, you want to build a rapport with these people, you're probably talking with or in communications with somebody who you will be working with. So you want to maintain a professional and positive working relationship. A bonus tip would be whether you say a number first or they say a number first, there's a lot of debate on that. You can find a way to get to the number you're looking for. I know there's a lot of debate on whether you should say the salary first or they should say the salary first, but genuinely I've done it both ways and I've had success doing it both ways. So now let's look at some questions. One question that they might ask you is, what are your salary expectations? Now, for the most part, you probably have talked during the, either the phone interview or the pre-screening with a recruiter about salary in some aspect or some way. If you haven't, that's okay. When you get here, I don't like to be specific, whether that's in the recruiting stage or the phone interview or this stage, I don't like to get specific. I really like to be vague or ask them, you know, what is your salary range for this position? Because that helps me gauge kind of where their budget is at for their department. And I can cater my answer to their range if that's within the salary range that I'm expecting or hoping for. Next question is, what happens if they lowball you? This can definitely happen and it's happened to me in the past. A job that I thought was about 65 to 70,000 for the salary, they ended up offering me 45,000. I was a little bit shocked when they actually offered me the position. But they asked, are you willing to negotiate on the salary? I said, yes. And I said, look, based on the market value that I am at right now, I feel like my salary should be closer to 65 or $70,000. And they countered with around 50 and I had to turn them down. And that's just the realities of that did not meet my minimum because I was making more than that at the time. And so I was a little bit disappointed because I thought I would be a good fit but in the end, it did not meet my lowest acceptable salary, and so I had to say no. The next question is, what if they don't budge on the salary at all? And this could happen. Some departments or some companies just have set salaries that they stick to, and the salary is what the salary is, and so they don't negotiate at all. But if it's above the lowest salary that you're looking to take, and you like the position, and you think it'd be a good fit, I say take it. I think that's the best move. Next question is a good one, and I think is an important one to know, is how many times should I counteroffer? 
And personally, I think you should only counter offer one time. If they offer you 65,000 and you counter with 75,000 and they meet in the middle at 70, do not push for an extra thousand or two. Don't offer, okay, what about 73? That doesn't look good. It kind of leaves a bad taste in their mouth as at least I can imagine it would leave a really bad taste in their mouth. So personally, I only do one counter offer. So that is negotiating your salary and that is our last video in this series. I hope that it has been helpful. I hope you learned something. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my channel. I have lots of other videos on everything data analytics related. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.